But God warned them that if they didn't listen, but in their time of need, when they called out, he wouldn't answer. What do you think is going to happen next? Well, let's, let's read Zechariah chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Therefore it happened that just as he proclaimed that they would not hear, so they called out, and I would not listen, says the Lord of hosts. But I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations which they had not known. Thus the land became desolate after them, so that no one passed through or returned, for they made the pleasant land desolate. So when they called on him, what would he do? Well, he wouldn't listen. It was just like he told them. It's just exactly. God is consistent. He's consistently consistent. And they were consistently erratic. God was true to what he told them. He said, this is what I'm going to do. And this is what he did. No surprises. People have this idea that, you know, somehow the God of the Bible is an arbitrary sort. So far from it. He's, he's, he's not, not even remotely arbitrary. The God of Scripture, he tells you what he's going to do before he does it. And, and then he does just exactly what he said he would do. I mean, he couldn't be any more consistent. So God tells them that he scattered them. He told them how it would be, and, and he lays the blame so very clearly at the end of verse 14. It said, they made the pleasant land desolate. I mean, God lays out the conditions. He tells you beforehand what he's going to do. He says, don't do this, and then we come along and we do this, and then God does exactly what he said he would do. It's not his choice, it's their choice. It's, it's their choice. They are responsible for making the land desolate. Hey, if the unfaithfulness of God's people back in those days uh, caused the land to be desolate, could our unfaithfulness cause the land to be desolate in our day? Could we be inhibiting what God wants to do? There is a war on between good and evil, and people are not just innocent bystanders. We are to become actively engaged in doing right. I'm not talking about what's the current, the current thing in secular politics. I'm not talking about the current the current narrative that is being pre presented out there by uh, the World Economic Forum or the World the United Nations or the World Health Organization, all these pieces that are so kind of blended together to make, a, uh, make us into some kind of a blob technocracy today globally. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about our part, our part to be good people, to help others, to be kind to others, to be generous and selfless toward others. I'm talking about that. We can do things our way and kind of leave the land desolate and leave the world wondering if there's any hope, or we can do things in God's own way and repeat, be repentant to let him transform our hearts and see what that doesn't result in, uh, in good on planet Earth. Humans have a giant role to play in the conflict between good and evil. It's not our idea, it's, 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 it's his idea, God's idea. He's the one that set it up this way. So we need to say, yes, sir, tell me what to do. So we want to learn how to be faithful. We want to take the bull by the horns, do something on our street, do something in our city. But we're going to see the next few days that truth isn't, isn't just something we intellectually accept, it's something that we actually do. See you tomorrow morning as we look into that.